This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got a condensing unit here that's supposedly freezing up. So we gotta take a look, see what's going on. I don't know if it's a heat pump, I'm assuming. So here's what we got. We got us an air conditioner, residential and a commercial application, and it's freezing up. They've got a fan cycle switch on it so that it can make up for the low ambient that it's being ran in. Uh, lately, it's been somewhere in the 40s. So technically right now it's 36 degrees and they're running the air conditioner, which you can get away with that. But when you've got air restrictions, which is where I think we're at, let's go in here and look at this. I just checked static pressure and they got fire dampers and uh, it tends to make it difficult. So what we got here, make sure there's no light in here. So we've checked the filter, filter's fine. We got a 0.87 static. You got an inspection damper here for the fire damper that's up there. And you've got a, another fire damper inspection port here and that one looked to be open too. They both look open. Problem is a 0 0.85, 0 0.9, that's pretty stupid. Now granted, um, the coil's probably slightly froze, but that shouldn't cause such a great suction on the return air side. The return air side, uh, we're pulling a 0.48 on the return side, and we're 0.36 on the supply side. So we're gonna go up in the attic and see if we can find another damper that might not be uh, closed, or might be open. Uh, either way, we're gonna find see if we can get a damper that's closed, because it really seems like something uh, went shut. Uh, they are turning it down way too cold here in the hallways and uh, probably needs programs so they can't go below 70. What it is is the patient rooms are super hot because they're older and they're running them like 80 degrees and then that radiates out in the hallway. Then the workers are dealing with it being that hot so they turn on the air conditioning. The problem is it obviously freezes up. Now generally you can go in here and Go to preferences. All right, the minimum set point is set for 69, which we could do 70. There's no reason it should be 70 degrees in, in a place like this. Maximum heat 81, which is pretty normal. Keypad unlocked. Sensors, no. No. So yeah, otherwise everything's pretty much done. Do you want to exit? Yes. You want to save changes? Yes. All right, so we came up through the hatchway there. They surprisingly have little walkways for us, which is really surprising. Normally, the older places like this are a disaster to try to get around in. Okay. Yeah, there's not gonna be a lot to see in here. Right there is the furnace, I'm pretty sure that's it. Now, they didn't put Air Handler 7 up here where you can see it. That would be kind of nice because there's so much insulation up here, you can't, can't see a whole lot of anything. Coming down to here, I'm assuming the red is probably for fire. Got an inspection port or a damper area right here. Get down in this area and see if we can get to this thing. Well, that's definitely the return. It's quite open to me. And right there is the fire damper. So you can get into that, no problem. So that's open. So maybe it's just poor uh, duct design, all I can come up with. You definitely got a pretty good size return here. That's got a slit in it, which means it's straight. I've seen worse uh, on the uh, static, but obviously it ain't where it should be at. There is a adjustment right there, it's open and that goes on across to over here. I'm assuming that right there probably goes down to the ceiling and pulls air from the attic. 
the static is higher on the, uh, on the incoming side, on the return side, than on the supply side. Everything seems to be open on that. Uh, see if maybe we can find something over on that, but I mean, from what I'm seeing, everything looks to be open. All right, that sounds like crap. That's where the other return's coming. Yeah, it's got some issues. They, uh, made it so you can't open the door here. Put that right in the way. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as long as it can get the return from over here, I guess. That obviously has got issues with it and it's had problems. I've never been here before. It's a fairly newer place, which is sad. Yeah, it's all bolted down. Okay, here's a supply. And it's got pretty good airflow coming out of it on all sides. So I think our airflow is as good as it's going to get. There's nothing you're going to do with walkways and all that. I went ahead and put the gauges on it. Got the probes on it for temperature. We're going to check to see how it's doing refrigerant-wise. Now, the fan came on awfully fast at 100. 49 psi that fan should not that's equivalent to 59 degrees i would say our fan cycle switch is junk and that's probably why it froze up after going through all that hell maybe i should have checked the unit out first um, i'm not a big fan of these fan cycle switches i think they're convenient but they're kind of chintzy i'd rather have a traditional fan cycle switch that we use for refrigeration but that's that's your issue right there let's see we're running a 28 degree evaporator and a 57 degree condensing temperature. That fan should not be running. Uh, I usually like to see mine shutting off around 90 degrees, a uh, condensing temperature and coming on maybe 110 ish area. So, you know, it just, it, yeah, that's, that's what we got going on. We got a defective switch. And I think as much as these kick on and off, it, it took the switch out and it's just, they're not, they're not that good for that. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'll get permission to change that switch. We just took the cover off. You can see they whacked into the uh, common wire on the fan and brought it up. So in theory, it's wired right, whatever. It's not that great the way that's done, but but yeah, that's, that's the issue there. We need to get them to okay us changing it to a traditional fan cycle switch, which is gonna be a lot more reliable. So what we got here is the Ranko. We'll get that thing set up. It should be able to handle the pressures. Let's go ahead and pull out our handy dandy chart here and see what 410A is going to be running at in around the 90-ish to 110-ish area. Go into our roof for tools here from Dan Foss. Okay, we want bubble because we're at the top, we're bubbling. Do your low on the ground, that's your suction for your superheat bubble subcooling the pie high side easy way to remember it let's go with 90 so that's 275 and this goes up to 400 so and then when, if we wanted to go to 110 that'd be 366 so we could do 366 375 with a 100 100 pound swing so we should be doggone close with that We'll run it right down kind of through the same area here. Watch that go on down. That's what I should have done the first time. A lot better than losing your finger. And she's not gonna have a... We're gonna go ahead and stop there. That's potentially as much as you're gonna get. Yeah, that's not doing any good. The uh, unit can't handle it all. It's such a long line set. Look at that inch and eighth suction line there. Yeah, so it, it don't matter. You're not you're not getting around it, unfortunately. Oh, they crank down on it so nice and tight that they mushroomed the the brass there. Yeah, well that's that's not getting reused. Got us a new one here. We'll go ahead and just install this. Put the brass ones on the electrical side. They are the same diameter as the silver. And we'll use uh, some speed terminals for that. There's a square end there, which makes that easier. 
Now when we mount this, we'll make sure that we don't cause it to kink or bind in any way. And we gotta find us a nice flat spot here on the air conditioner to mount it. Okay, this should fit up in there all pretty. I have mixed feelings on this. I like Romex connector. Theoretically, you could run it inside there. I'm always kind of worried that it's gonna vibrate into the uh, shell of it and possibly short out. I know there's a lot of people that don't run the Romex connector in there. With you being inside the box, technically you probably don't need to, but I think it's a good practice to do. There you go. And this other one, same thing. We'll just bring it up the back. Hook another one on it and plug it into the back. Pretty simple call. Could have uh, found it a little quicker. Uh, never a big fan of running the air conditioner in stupid weather like this. Um, but unfortunately, price is a determining factor a lot of times, more than ever. And uh, it's what they've got and it's what they've been using, so you kind of just make it work. It definitely is a lot of wear and tear. Uh, be easier than having an economizer of some sort, but it's not what they got, so we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to make it work. Now, uh, your refrigeration wrench will fit on top here, and you're able to adjust that without having to try to do it with a screwdriver, which is kind of nice. We talked about it being around three, around 75 pounds, 100 pounds, I believe, is what we said, and we talked about 375 on the head. <clears throat> we'll see what we got in that area. Twisteroni here with the screwdriver. Should get us doggone close. There we go. That looks like that will work. We'll get the nine log on there and we'll get this thing tightened down in advance. Then we'll screw it onto the refrigerant line. And then we can run this thing and see how she does. But look at that, we got lucky. Fancy Nancy. Just a little bit there on the old face. You're not even getting that in there a little bit. It's, it's wanting to freeze your fingers off. Can't wait. See if we can crank that Schrader core in a little bit further. Would have been nice if we could have pumped it down, but you know, they got an extremely long line set. There, that gives us a little more room. Yeah, not really. All right, so I went ahead and just slowly cranked it in with the uh, wrench. Yeah. Look at that, it's leaking through the Schrader port. That's, that's nice, high quality stuff there. What a junk. Everything's freaking garbage, man. Everything is garbage nowadays. Everything is garbage. Gotta get that out of there so it's not in the wires. That could probably make a mess. Okay, I'm making sure not to cut all the way through this clear tubing. I'm not cutting into their wall or anything like that. I'm just using it to keep it straight and I'm using my thumb and finger, finger to use it as a guide as I pull it down through the center and we're just splitting the uh, vinyl tubing. Now we'll wrap that around the cap tube and that'll protect it from vibration. It'll keep it from shortening into the capacitor wires. Just slide that right on up, like we're doing. See how that just kind of makes its way right on up there? Makes her nice. I'll just take that on down here to the very bottom. Normally, if I hadn't already rolled the circular pigtail, I would probably wrap it around it anyway, but we're just gonna get down here to it, and then we'll just chop that excess off. Let's uh, get that all backed out and tightened up. Let's see what our pressures do here. Fan's not coming on, that's a good thing. 
get our probe for our liquid hooked up. Let's see what we get. Open at 300, close at 400, give or take 15. Should have done it, which I think I'm at 375. So yeah, 374, holy cow, that thing's dead balls on. We can bring it down just a touch. Sometimes it's trial and error until you find what you want. There's 358, that's 108. That ain't too bad. You figure it's gonna run probably about 15 degrees over ambient area when this thing's running in the summertime. Kicked off at 85. The pressure's so high that it's such a short swing. Just a little bit of airflow and instantly gonna kick right back out. Kicked out at technically at 94, but man, it's dropping all the way down to 85. So unfortunately, I mean, that's about where we're gonna need to be at. So at least it's staying off for quite a while, which is gonna keep the bearings lubricated. Uh, you don't wanna sit there and short cycle them. I like the one where it is modulating and stuff. Uh, you know, it slows down. That's kind of what we normally would use a lot of times, but this is what we use on the refrigeration and it's on my truck and it's just simple enough to do that. Uh, I think what we're gonna find is our CPU is going to start coming up here once it starts to stabilize. Subcooling is definitely up there, so pressures and stuff seem to be right in line. And then with that shutting off at 90-ish area, you figure a 70-degree day, 80, 90, that's about where it's going to shut off on a 70-degree day. Anything below 70, it's going to shut and cycle the fan, shut off the fan and cycle it. So, so we've been holding pretty steady in there. Uh, Subcooling has been as high as 20 something. Now it just dropped down because the fan got going. But we're holding in there 87 at the shutoff. I kind of wanted to stay in the 90 or above. Coming on 100, uh, 108, which is not too bad. Evaporator's holding in at 47, 46 degrees. We're well above freezing. Uh, I'm going to say we're probably pretty good there. We're at 50. 51 degrees area, so it's, I can't believe they haven't put no lights in here at all. Well, it's not as, it's getting a little cool air out of the attic, so 51 minus 66, that's a 15 degree split. We don't really have any water dripping down the drain, so I'd say that coil has satisfied itself. I'm gonna go ahead and put that at 72. I think that's a little, a little more logical, a little more acceptable especially when you're trying to keep so warm in some of the patient rooms. Well, guys, I think it's going to wrap this one up. Uh, you know, it could have went straight to checking the refrigerant charge, but when you're in this kind of weather, generally it's not too uncommon for crazy things to happen. Um, usually those little switches are pretty reliable, but, you know, in this case here, it obviously wasn't. You know, it, uh, this unit is a... 2017, so 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, so we're five years old, so that switch has been kicking on and off all winter for five years, potentially, four years. I don't think it's been that long, but it kind of seems like it. But, um, you know, this one should should hold out for quite a while. We'll put a date on it and uh, we'll go from there. But refrigerant charge looks fine. It's just, uh, you know, it's a little cool out here today and that's just the way it is when you're running patient rooms at 80 degrees area and then hallway for the employees has got to be a little cooler, otherwise they're about ready to pass out and die. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, smack the thumbs button, click the notification button. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.